Hello everyone, welcome back. So we are going to start the anatomy of the lower limb and we are going to start that from the osteology of the lower limb. So in this tutorial, we will discuss the anatomy of hip bones or the os coxae. So the hip bone or os coxae forms the lower limb girdle that attaches the lower limb to the vertebral column and it is topographically and functionally the equivalent of the upper limb clavicle and scapula. So three skeletal elements, the ilium, ischium and pubis form the os coxae and these three bones meet one another at the acetabulum through the Y-shaped triradiate cartilage, which we will discuss later in this tutorial when we will be discussing the acetabulum. So, the os coxae articulate with the sacrum at the sacroiliac joints and form the anterolateral walls of the pelvis. These two bones also articulate with one another anteriorly at the symphysis pubis. So, now we will discuss the important bony features found on the outer or gluteal surface of one of these hip bones. So, let's discuss these bony features. So, now you can see that both of the hip bones have been highlighted in different colors, and these colors show different parts of the ilium, ischium, and pubis. So, first we will discuss the different parts of the ilium, ischium, and pubis. So, let's remove all other bones and take one of the hip bones. So, we have isolated a single hip bone and we will use it to discuss the different parts of the ilium, ischium and pubis. So, the ilium has two parts. This superiorly located thin pen shaped part of the bone is called the ala or wing of the ilium while this inferiorly located thick irregularly shaped part of the bone is the body of ilium and this part of ilium is the articular surface of ilium through which it articulates with the sacrum at the sacroiliac joint so if you take a look at the parts of ischium bone so the ischium is this l shaped bone and it has two parts this posteriorly located thick irregularly shaped part of the ischium bone is the body of ischium while this flat bony bar that projects from the inferior portion of the body of ischium is the ramus of ischium or ischial ramus and now if we take a look at the parts of pubis so the pubis has three parts this medially located quadrilateral shape part of the bone is the body of pubis and this superiorly located bony bar that projects from the superolateral aspect of the body of pubis is the superior pubic ramus and this inferiorly located flat bony bar that projects from the inferolateral aspects of the body of pubis is the inferior pubic ramus so this means that the superior and inferior pubic rami extend from the superolateral and inferolateral aspects of the body of pubis respectively. Okay, so these were the different parts of ilium, ischium and pubis and we can also explain these bones according to different surfaces which are named according to different anatomical regions but we will not explain those surfaces here and we will make a short tutorial on those surfaces of ilium, ischium and pubis. So now we will move towards the different bony features or you can say bony outgrowths that are found on ilium, ischium and pubis. And you can see that these hip bones are colored once again in different colors and these colors show different bony outgrowths that are found on ilium, ischium and pubis. So, once again, let's take one of these hip bones to explain these bony features. Okay, so we are having an anterior view of this hip bone. So, first we will explain the anterior bony features and then we will move towards the posterior bony features of each of ilium, ischium and pubis. So, this surface is obviously the articular surface of ilium through which it articulates with the sacrum. And this narrow ridge found along the internal surface of ilium is the 
arcuate line of ilium. This blunt process that marks the anterior end of the iliac crest is the anterior superior iliac spine. While this thick rough process found along the anterior border of ilium is the anterior inferior iliac spine. And you can see that the anterior inferior iliac spine is located between the anterior superior iliac spine and the acetabulum. So it is found in between these two anatomical structures. Okay, so these were the bony features found anteriorly on ilium. And now let's have a superior view of ilium so that we can see an important bony feature that is found superiorly on ilium. Okay, so now we are having a superior view of ilium and you can see this whole ridge or crest which is called the iliac crest. And you can see that in this model, the iliac crest has been divided into three different colors or zones. So, this region of iliac crest that is found internally is called the inner lip of iliac crest. While this medial zone of iliac crest is called the intermediate zone of iliac crest. And this third zone of iliac crest that is found externally is called the outer lip of iliac crest. So the iliac crest has been divided into these three zones because these three zones give origin to different muscles of luteal region. So now let's have a posterior view of ilium so that we can explain the bony features found posteriorly on ilium. Okay, so on the posterior surface or gluteal surface of ilium, you can see these three lines called the gluteal lines. So this line is called the posterior gluteal line, while this line is called the anterior gluteal line, and this line is called the inferior gluteal line. So this region between the anterior and posterior gluteal line serves as the origin site for gluteus medius muscle, while this region between the anterior and inferior gluteal lines serve as the origin site for gluteus minimus muscle. So you would be thinking that where is the origin site for the gluteus maximus muscle. So this region which is behind the posterior gluteal line serves as the origin site for gluteus maximus muscle. So actually the gluteal lines clarify the origin sites of gluteus medius, minimus and maximus muscles. Now this prominence which is found about 2 inches or 5 centimeters behind the anterior superior iliac spine is the iliac tubercle. So previously we explained that the anterior superior iliac spine serves as the anterior end for the iliac crest. So this blunt process serves as the posterior end of the iliac crest and this blunt process is called the posterior superior iliac spine. So the iliac crest runs from the anterior superior iliac spine to the posterior superior iliac spine. And this similar prominence which is located below the posterior superior iliac spine is the posterior inferior iliac spine. This curved depression that is located posterior superior to the acetabulum is the supraacetabular groove. And this groove serves as an attachment site for the rectus femoris muscle. So these were the bony features of ilium. And now let's move towards the bony features of ischium. Okay, so once again we are having an anterior view of this hip bone. And now we are going to discuss the bony features of ischium. So first let's highlight the ischium so that you can identify the ischium and the bony features of ischium. So this whole bony part highlighted in green is the ischium bone and this one is obviously the pubis. So anteriorly on this hip bone you can see this whole region which is actually a raised area on hip bone and this raised area marks the union between the body of ilium and the superior pubic ramus. So this raised region is called the iliopubic or iliopectineal eminence. So this iliopubic or iliopectineal eminence is actually found on the border between the body of ilium and the superior pubic ramus. 
and this eminence serves as an insertion site for the soas minor muscle and as an attachment site for pubofemoral ligament and the iliopsoas fascia but for now let's not go into detail of these structures and for now you just need to remember that this eminence is actually the iliopubic or iliopectineal eminence okay so the remaining bony features of ischium can be well explained from a posterior lateral view so let's rotate this model to a posterior lateral view so that we can explain the remaining bony features of ischium okay so from a posterior lateral view you can see this pointed triangular process found along the posterior border of body of ischium and this spinous process is called the ischial spine while this rounded rough elevation on the dorsal surface of body of ischium is the ischial tuberosity so between the ischial tuberosity and the ischial spine you can see this notch or indentation that is found along the posterior border of body of ischium and this notch is called the lesser sciatic notch so the lesser sciatic notch extends inferiorly from the ischial spine along the posterior border of body of ischium to the upper margin of the ischial tuberosity as you can see and previously we studied that this process is called the posterior inferior iliac spine so between the posterior inferior iliac spine and the ischial spine you can find this notch or indentation which is actually found along the posterior border of both the ilium and ischium so this notch is called the greater sciatic notch so the greater sciatic notch runs superiorly from the ischial spine along the posterior border of both the body of ilium and ischium to end at the posterior inferior iliac spine now one thing you would like to know here is that the greater and lesser sciatic notch are converted into greater and lesser sciatic foramina by the presence of two ligaments which run from sacrum to the ischial spine and the ischial tuberosity so let me bring out the sacrum and those two ligaments so this is the sacrum and these are those two ligaments which run from sacrum to the ischial spine and the ischial tuberosity so this ligament which runs from the sacrum to the ischial spine is the sacrospinous ligament and the sacrospinous ligament converts the greater sciatic notch into greater sciatic foramen while this ligament which runs from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity is the sacrotuberous ligament and the sacrotuberous ligament converts the lesser sciatic notch into lesser sciatic foramen so the sacrospinous and the sacrotuberous are those two ligaments which convert the greater and lesser sciatic notches into greater and lesser sciatic foramina okay so now let's talk about pubis so we are having a lateral view of this hip bone and you can see this small raised eminence found along the lateral end of the body of pubis and this raised eminence is called the pubic tubercle and this region which is medial to the pubic tubercle and which is not highlighted in this model is called the pubic crest so you would be thinking about this foramen like structure and you would like to know what this structure is called so this structure or region which is found inferior to the superior pubic ramus and superior to the ischio pubic ramus is called the obturator foramen and this foramen is filled later in life by this membranous structure called the obturator membrane so now let's rotate this model to a bit more lateral view so that we could be able to discuss the acetabulum so this deep depression found on the outer surface of the hip bone is actually termed as the acetabulum and you can see that this acetabulum articulates with almost spherical head of the femur to form the hip joint so the inferior margin of the acetabulum is deficient and is marked by this notch called the acetabular notch and if we talk about the articular surface of the acetabulum so this region of the acetabulum is the articular surface of the acetabulum which is actually a horseshoe shaped area and it is covered with hyaline cartilage while this floor of the acetabulum is non articular and it is termed as the acetabular fossa 
and I'm sure that you would have noticed this colored rim around the acetabulum. So this colored rim around the acetabulum is actually the acetabular margin. And the acetabular margin is the site of attachment for a number of fibrocartilaginous structures. So the pubic parts of these two hip bones meet one another anteriorly at this cartilaginous joint called the pubic symphysis. So in the anatomic position, the front of the symphysis pubis and the anterior superior iliac spines lie in the same vertical plane. So this means that the pelvic surface of the pubic symphysis faces upward and backward while the anterior surface of the sacrum is directed forward and downward. So this was all about the anatomy of hip bones. So if you have any confusion in what we studied, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much.